What we're going to be going over here is the cost of goods sold budget and we'll go through a comprehensive example to calculate our cost of goods sold budget. So uh, we start out with our master budget here and then under our master budget we have our operating budget and then we have our financial budget. So our cost of goods sold is going to be under our operating budget here. So with our operating budget, the first budget we have to prepare is the sales budget. Knowing our sales budget, then we can prepare our production budget and then also our selling and administrative budget. But uh, after we pre prepare our production budget, then we can prepare our direct materials budget, direct labor's budget, and also our factory overhead budget. And then after we've prepared those, then we can uh, prepare our ending inventory budget. And now we get down to the cost of goods sold. So knowing our ending inventory budget and all our other budgeting numbers, then we can determine our cost of goods sold budget. And once we know our cost of goods sold budget, then we can determine our income statement budget. Okay, so what is included in this cost of goods sold budget? Okay, so for the cost of goods sold budget, what you would do here, the first thing you have to do is determine your budgeted total manufacturing costs. So you start with the cost of your direct material used. That's going to come off your direct material budget. Then you add to it the cost of direct labor used, coming off your direct labor budget. And then you would add to that the total factory overhead costs, coming off your factory overhead budget. So once you know your total uh, total budgeted manufacturing cost, then you can determine your budgeted cost of goods sold. So here's where you take your start out with your uh, budgeted total manufacturing cost that you calculated up here, and then you would add to it the beginning finished goods that you have for the period, and then you'd have to subtract your ending finished goods from it to determine your uh, budgeted cost of goods sold. And these beginning finished goods and the ending finished goods are going to come from your production budget and your ending inventory budget. Okay, so we'll move on with our example. Now for calculating our cost of goods sold budget, and remember these are based on budget estimates, and we're going to be looking at just a single product here, but you'd have to go through all your products within the company to determine your total cost of goods sold budget. So we'll just track it through with a single product here. Now we're also going to be looking at just a specific month here for our cost of goods sold budget. We're looking at the months of March here, and you'd have to again do it for all the months of the year here to set up your cost of goods sold budgets. So starting with our sales budget for the month of March we're projecting uh, 11,000 units that are going to be sold and then uh, and for the April we're also going to be looking at the April date here where we're going to be uh, projecting 12,000 units that have to be sold so the next thing we have to determine is our desired ending inventories here and it's really going to be based on the next period sales budget here these desired ending inventories and in our case we're just going to look at some percentages here so for our direct materials we're going to look at 10 percent of the periods a periods materials needs here for direct materials materials based again on our our sales budget and then for our finished goods we're going to be looking at five percent of the next period sales here again for finished goods and remember uh, your desired ending inventory is usually based on the next period sales budget so for March here we'd be basing our next period sales budget here on April's sales figures okay so the next thing we have to know is our direct materials, labor, and factory overhead, how these, these break down. And we ask, we're going to be looking at our cost per unit here, uh, that our total cost here per, per unit. So this is what we want to determine. Okay, starting with our direct materials, just for our example here, we're going to have this one product, and we'll just say there's two uh, part pieces or uh, parts here per unit or per each unit of the product we sell and their cost input is at ten dollars each for each of those two parts so our total direct materials would be two times that or twenty dollars here for one unit and then for a direct labor our total unit here is going to take four tenths of an hour for our example times a cost input of fifteen dollars per hour for direct labor so our direct labor here is going to be six dollars per uh, six dollars here for the unit cost and then for our factory overhead it's going to be based again on direct labor hours our variable amount again that four tenths of an hour here for the unit uh, direct labor and take that times our cost input in this case the variable overhead is going to be based at a thirty dollar per hour cost so four tenths of thirty dollars gives us a variable overhead uh, cost here of twelve dollars per unit and then our fixed 
overhead would be, again, four tenths of an hour times $50 per hour. That's what we're estimating our uh, fixed overhead to be here. So that equals $20 here uh, in fixed overhead here. So totaling everything up, we're going to come up with a, a cost here per unit produced here at $58. So this is going to be our unit or our standard cost. And then the other thing with our fixed overhead, we're going to base that on a total budgeted amount here of 4,800 direct labor hours. So that's just saying we're taking an average, we have 12,000 uh, direct labor hours per month and times the unit base here of 4 tenths hours per unit. That gives us 4,800 uh, hours here. So that's what we're going to be using for our fixed overhead. Okay, now moving down here for our cost of goods sold budget. This is how we'd set it up. We take our budgeted total manufacturing cost. So we start with our cost of the direct materials used here, and that's going to be $221,000. So let's go and let's go through this in a comprehensive example here, and let's just go look at our uh, look at our direct materials that we used here. So here we're going to go look at our direct materials budget. So what we have to start out with is the direct quantity of mater uh, direct materials, the quantity that is needed for production. And in this case, it's going to be 11,050 units here times two parts per unit for 22,100 pieces for our direct materials. So where do we get the 11,050 here? So we're going to be using this number throughout our example here. So we have to go up to our production budget to get that number. This is the case here where we're taking our unit sales for March to be 11,000 here. Then we have to add on our desired ending finished goods here. That was based on that 5% requirement we have times the ending inventory is based on the April budget here. The April budgeted sales were 12,000 units and 5% of that is 600 units. Then we have to subtract our beginning finished goods uh, from it. So we take again 5%, that was our budgeted amount here, times the current period here, 3-1, 11,000 units we pro projected here uh, to sell. And that's going to give us 550 uh, units here. So netting that or subtracting that from our net amount above here, the units that we're going to have to be produced here are 11,050 units. Our unit sales that we're projecting from the sales department is 11,000, but our production here has to be increased due to the fact that we have to take care of our desired ending and beginning inventories here. Okay, so we've got our production number here at 11,050 here. So remember that number, we're gonna be using that in our example. So going back to our direct materials budget, we put that in as our uh, direct material quantity that we need here, 11,050 units times two parts per unit gives us 22,100 pieces. Then our budgeted cost, the direct material would just be those number of pieces, 22,100 times again $10 per part or $221,000. Okay, now we can go back to our cost of goods sold budget. So our cost of direct materials, we just calculated that to be $221,000. So the next thing we have to do is we have to add to that the cost of the direct labor that's used and that's $66,300. So let's go and let's look at that. Okay, so here we go to our direct labor budget. So we just take our direct labor hours needed for production, and that would be the units that we have to produce times our direct labor hours per unit. Remember, we calculated those units that we have to produce here at 11,050 units times four tenths of an hour per unit. That's gonna give us 4,420 hours. Now we can take that to determine our budgeted direct labor cost. Direct labor hours needed times the cost per direct labor hour. So we take the 4,420 direct labor hours here times, again, $15 here per hour for direct labor. That's going to give us a cost here of $66,300. So that comes off our direct labor budget. Okay, so going back to our cost of goods sold budget. So here we take our cost of labor used here. That we calculated to be $66,300. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to add to that our total factory overhead costs, and those are going to be $372,600. So let's go and calculate that. So here we have to move over to our factory overhead budget. So we just start with our budgeted fixed overhead. That was budgeted fi or fixed overhead times the total standard hours. And remember, our total standard hours in this case, we estimated to be 4,800 standard hours for those units that we're producing here. So our fixed overhead rate was $50 per hour times the 4,800 standard hours gives us 
$240,000. Now we have to add to it our budgeted variable overhead. So our variable overhead times, again, our direct labor hours needed. That would be, in this case, $30 for our variable overhead is $30 per direct labor hour times, in this case, it was the 4,420 4, direct labor hours that we needed, and that's going to give us $132,600. Just look at this 4,420. We can go back to what we did here from our direct labor budget. We got, remember, we calculated uh, unit, uh, direct labor hours needed for production here at 4,420 hours. So that's where we got. Uh, we take this is where we determine our variable overhead the variable rate here at thirty dollars per hour times those uh, direct uh, direct labor hours that are needed to produce the product here so that gives us 130 well thirty dollars times forty four hundred twenty that gives us hundred thirty two thousand six hundred dollars so adding that to our variable rate here our variable cost to our budgeted fixed cost here two hundred forty thousand uh, gives us a total budgeted factory overhead here at $372,600. Okay, so here's where we calculated our total factory overhead. You, we take our uh, budgeted factory overhead from the factory overhead budget here. So, All right, so let's go back to our cost of goods sold. So we total factory overhead, we calculated that to be $372,600. So adding our direct material that we used here, and then adding to it our cost of direct labor used here, 66300 and our total factory overhead here of uh, 372.6. Our total manufacturing cost is $659,900. Okay, so that's our total manufacturing cost. Now we can determine our budgeted cost of goods sold. So we start with our budgeted total manufacturing cost, the 659900 that we calculated. Then we have to add to it the beginning finished goods here. So in this case, remember, we're using that 5% rate here for our, our desired beginning inventories and in, ending inventories. So take 5% times, and we're looking at beginning inventory based on our March date here. So our, for our March sales, we're projecting 11,000 units here, 5% times that, times, in this case, remember, we are, on a per unit basis, we calculated our uh, unit cost here to be $58 earlier when we looked at our numbers, when we developed our numbers for this example. So 5% times the 11,000 projected sales here uh, for March times $58 here per unit. The per unit cost is going to give us $31,900 here. So we would be adding that to our total uh, budgeted a total manufacturing cost. Now we have to subtract out our ending fixed goods here. Again, we use that 5% rate here for our finished goods that we were looking at, but we take at times uh, 12,000 units here, and that's based on our next month here, that uh, April month here, 12,000 units that are projected to be sold, again times the $58 here per unit. That per unit cost that we calculated, so 5% times 12,000 units here, times $58 per unit is going to give us $34,800. Now remember that here we have to we have to subtract out our ending finished goods from our, our total budgeted manufacturing cost here. So netting uh, subtracting our $34,800 from our net amount up here, our total budget co total budgeted cost of goods sold is $650,000 $657,000. Okay, so you can see what we've done in this problem. All right, to summarize what we've done here for the cost of goods sold budget, the first thing you have to do is you have to do total, uh, determine your total budgeted manufacturing cost, and that equals your direct material that you've estimated you're going to use, your total cost or your direct labor that you're going to use, and then you'd have to add to it your total factory overhead cost, both variable and fixed. That gives your total manufacturing cost. Now you take that total manufacturing cost or the budgeted uh, total manufacturing cost here, and then you can determine your budgeted cost of goods sold. That's just taking your total manufacturing cost and then uh, adjusting it for your beginning finished goods inventory. You'd have to add that to it. And then you'd have to subtract uh, your ending finished goods inventory, at least what you're budgeted here, from your total amounts. And that's going to give you your budgeted total cost of goods sold. Now, if we move back over here to our diagram here on our budgeting diagram, looking at our operating budget, 
really we have uh, the cost of goods sold here is actually the seventh budget that we have to develop here. And we have to know the other budgets here before we can determine our cost of goods sold budget. We'd have to know our sales budget, our production budget, direct materials, direct labor, factory overhead budget, and also our ending inventory as shown on this diagram here. So then when we get those all developed, then we can determine our cost of goods sold budget. And then once we determine our cost of goods sold budget, then we can determine our selling uh, an administration budget up here, and also our income statement budget. Okay, so in the hierarchy of things, the cost of goods sold budget is the seventh budget here that we have to develop under our operating budget. Okay, so that'll uh, summarize our uh, what we discussed here on our cost of goods sold for developing the budget.